Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Brian's Farm. So today we're starting off in the eggplant. Me and mom are out here. The eggplant are still kind of small, but they're big enough now to where we can get maybe one off of like every couple plants. So like this one right here isn't huge, but it's big enough to where, you know, it's, it's definitely usable. People will definitely buy it. Mom just got one in the basket right there. And then she's got another one she's setting in right there. They look, the plants look really healthy, along with the eggplant, nice and shiny. Just have a little bit of mud splashed on them from the last rain. And then up here, which I wasn't here for, is our late season cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, all that kind of cold crops we got planted. And so you can see there's like, I don't know, probably 25 rows. And they start at the woods there and go all the way out over the hill to where you can't see them. So obviously these plants won't be ready now for a couple months. Mom forgot a pair of clippers. So I'm just gonna hold the basket for her. Like I said in my previous video, we're starting to get dry again. So we irrigated our potato field last night. And now I think, I don't know if we're gonna irrigate today, but the next time we irrigate will probably be our tomatoes and eggplant, which is all on the same line. That's why that'll work because like I said, these are beautiful, but they're just not producing a lot. They're not getting any bigger because they just have no water. I mean, there's probably one or two here. There's one right here. Just get a little bit bigger. Where? Here? Yeah. Just borderline. Pick it. <sighs> Somebody will be happy for it. And then I think there's one right here, ain't there? Oh, there? oh boy. If they like them small, they'll like them. Young and tender. I don't know if eggplant's ever really tough, but... Right here. Right behind you. That's not big enough. Yeah, it's as big as one in my hand. Look at that. Same size. Okay, well the basket's way back here. If you pick like two or three more, we'll have a full basket. Found a pair of dikes in the Kubota. They work just as good as clippers. So then out here at the other end of our eggplant, we planted, not for the first time ever, we've done it, but we just don't do it often. We planted some celery and parsley. And I don't know, there's something else we planted down here, maybe basil. So this is the celery. Now it doesn't seem to be doing very well. We only planted like eight plants of it just because we had it left in our greenhouses. I think our soil might not be quite right for celery because it never seems to do good for us, but maybe there's also a trick that we just don't know about. So there's a celery, and then down here at the end of the celery is curly parsley. Now I think this stuff also would do a little better if we had some more rain. And then down here on the end, other end of the curly parsley is just regular Italian parsley which this is doing really nice. And then down here is the basil, which this is kind of going out in the flower now, but there's still a lot of good on it. All you gotta do is clip it off. And yeah. It. Smells delicious. So we just got our three baskets. Mom's got a couple more she's picking. We got out to a good section here. Most of the way a little more wet. You can see the plants are a lot bigger and thicker and greener. So next time we come out, now we'll just know that this is where we need to come. To come to this end. Just looking in from the edge here, I can see there's a nice one there. 
over here is another nice one. And then right down through there, which is hard to see, is another nice one. Out here, there, and there. I might have to come back out here because that one's huge. A lot of nice ones. A lot of people are asking for them at market, so I might come out here and maybe pick another three or four baskets if, if I can find them. So we just got back to the shed in here. My brother's wife picked all of these huge tomatoes out of the high tunnel. We want to get the scale over here. We know these are definitely right around two pounds. I think some are definitely over and obviously some are a little smaller. Got a lot of boxes of them. There's two, four, six, and then two, four, six baskets of, so we have 12 basically half bushels all together here. And then mom is putting the eggplant through right now, which I'm supposed to be catching. I'm just getting some video of the tomatoes. One thing about eggplant is you want to make sure your hands are not dirty because once they're washed, they're so nice and shiny that even a fingerprint makes them look ugly. So we try and make sure that they go on the donuts and roll off correctly, and then we'll put them right in the crate with clean hands. So one thing I did not show you about eggplant that you may or may not have known is that, well, let me catch some of these. Sometimes they come off in the washer, which actually they are, right here. If you can see how, if it focuses correctly, you can see the little tiny spikes on the eggplant. And I guess that is just its natural way of keeping like pests like, keeping things like deer and any kind of other animals away from eating it. Because typically an animal wants to bite from the top down, well if he goes to bite at the top of this, he's gonna get stuck in the mouth with a bunch of spikes and they're not gonna want to eat it. So that's just kind of, it's natural defense. And also a market, we sometimes have to tell people to be careful because they'll just go rooting through the whole basket that we have on the table and they'll get picked and then you know they get upset. but. We try and warn them as much as possible. So mom just headed out to the market. She has a really nice load. Tomatoes, uh, some sweet corn, peppers, eggplant, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm up here now in the pepper field. I'm gonna try and get some peppers for tomorrow for Scranton. There's not a lot. They're still pretty small, but they're starting to get some hard shells on them. If you don't know about peppers, and kind of with anything, you know, obviously when it's small, it's not mature it's not at the right stage. So obviously you can still use a pepper no matter what, I mean, it's still good, but people like them when they have that nice hard outer shell. So I'm just out here looking, you know, I might only get one or two peppers off each plant and that one has a little bit of a kink into it, but that's has a decently hard shell. It's not huge, but I know people are gonna buy them and I know that they're gonna have some good flavor. Usually, this is called a giant Marconi, or we call them large Italian, whatever you want to call them. These will get about double the size, and they'll be even darker green. But like I said, they're still just a little small, but that's okay, and I know people are going to buy them. One thing you gotta be careful of when picking peppers is you wanna pick them by like the stem. That one has a nicer stem on it. And so like I won't just grab a pepper, no this one's small, but I won't just grab this and pull it off. I'll actually try and grab it by the top of the stem right here and then I'll just pull up on it usually if that's the way I think it'll break off easiest. And then, you know, pick it and keep moving because you can actually easily, with no effort at all, take and just break a whole plant right in half. I mean, I've done it many a times. Obviously I try not to, but sometimes it just happens. And then sometimes you also get these. Now this could be from just a lack of rain. You know, there's all sorts of factors that could play into that. But I do know one thing, rain would definitely make these grow a lot faster and bigger. Go 
rip that little off. Alrighty, first basket done. Heading on to the next one. It's actually getting a little bit better as I go out towards the road out that way. So, ooh, here's another one. That's starting to get to almost full maturity right there. Little bigger, little bigger, but very, very close. Beautiful. Not a big fan of pepper. Some people can just sit there all day long and just take a raw pepper and just keep eating it and eating it. I. I don't really enjoy that so much. If I have some ranch, then I can, but still, you know, it's just not my favorite thing in the world. Okay, so the Italian now kind of fizzled out a little bit. I got a basket and a half of beautiful ones. Now I'm gonna move on to Cubanelles, which is basically the same thing as an Italian L, just they have a lighter skin and the shells are a little thinner. A lot of people say if you were blindfolded, you really couldn't taste the difference between the two. And I agree, I've had them both and you know, I think they have the same flavor. So I'm gonna go along here, see what I can get. These actually look like they're a little more plentiful, but we'll see. And they actually seem like they're also a little more mature. They, these are typically a little smaller, but as of right now, just because the Italian nails aren't fully grown, they're kind of the same size. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can reach out to more people and show them what we do and how we do it. Okay, so I just got finished, had a ball picking them. There was a lot out here. So, well, a lot in the sense of, you know, for the beginning. So I got like four Cubanelles, but this fourth basket is kind of mixed Cuban and Italian. And I got like a basket and a half of Italian and then one basket of Bell. So they're all just starting to come on. They're all just getting some nice hard shells on them. So I'm gonna have a little bit softer shell, but it'll be okay. All looking really nice. This field has a lot of potential. If we could just get a little more rain, we'll have way more peppers than we know what to do with. It'll be coming out our ears. So, and that's a good thing because we love, you know, pushing it to the limits, picking as many baskets as we can, going to market and trying to sell as much as possible. So can't wait. Hopefully within about the next week, I would say we should really be in the thick of it and picking probably, I would say between 30 and 60 baskets about every other, every day or every other day. We feel so bad. We just keep thinking we're gonna have corn. We keep telling people, we told them on Monday we'd have it Wednesday, we told them on Wednesday we'd have it Friday, we told them on Friday we'd for sure have it this coming Monday and the corn is just not ripening. I, we don't, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Typically, you know, in ideal conditions, it would be ready. And anyway, here's the corn that should be ready. And so, I'll try and hold this and peel this. You can just see, it's just now 
starting to get some color onto it. Beautiful ear, filled out really nice, but it just, it's not there yet. And we're not gonna take corn, obviously that's not good. And so, I wanna say, for sure we'll have it on Wednesday now, but I don't know, I keep, I'm, I keep being wrong. So I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna tell the people, you know, just try and be patient, we're gonna have it when we have it. I know a lot of people have been waiting. If, you're, if you go to the market and you are watching, just bear with us because we're just as anxious as you are to bring it. So just because, you know, they're not perfectly straight, I like to help them onto the washer. That way they can rotate a couple times on there before they go through. That way, you know, they get some kind of washing. And just because we wash them here on the farm doesn't mean, you know, you should take them home and, you know, just start eating them. But we always tell the people to wash them again thoroughly when they get home. Just because, you know, there's still mud and dirt left on them after they go through the washer. Just not near as bad and it makes them look a lot prettier and shinier than just taking them right from the field to the market. So then after they go through the washer, they'll come out down here onto these donuts, dries them off somewhat, and then they'll come onto the round table where I will grab a crate from over here and then fill it up. There is a couple Italian L's mixed in here with the Cubans, but, oh, too many blocks out here. That's not a big deal. I can either sort them out or mix them together, it doesn't matter. When we sell them at market, we usually put them in the same bin anyway. All right, so now that everything is picked and packed, I'm gonna head home for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.